Hey, welcome to Whatcha Doin' with Brandon Horwin and Sophie Williams. And today's special guest is... I'm Lou Bernie, and I'm a novelist. Uh, I've written four novels, uh, literary crime, I guess you would call them. And uh, I'm just here and happy to be chatting. Great. Well, welcome to Whatcha Doin', and we're thrilled to um, sort of you know, highlight your incredible career and and mend the ties between art and writing and, you know, all of this um, creating that I would like to say that that we all do. That sounds good. I mean, that's what I spend most of the day doing, so I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> Great. So can you just tell us a little bit about your journey to writing and sort of how you got your start and where the roads led you to today? Yeah, I started really early with an interest in writing. Uh, I have two older sisters and they both um, love to play school. And they, you know, and so I learned to read and write at a very early age and to tell stories and to love telling stories. And so really it's been kind of in my bones and my blood for as long as I can remember. And then at some point, I think in college, I started out as a journalism major and I discovered that I'm not, I'm not real great at reporting the facts. I'm much better at making things up. So uh, I, I realized at that point that like going into, into fiction and, and, and that world was much, much, much more up my alley. And it's, it's something I, that I, I learned that I was, I was pretty good at um, and I'm not much good at anything else. And so that's sort of where I ended up the way I am. Great. Well, you, um, you know, mentioned something that happens throughout, you know, a person's creative process. And that was that fiction spoke to you a lot more than perhaps facts. So you were able to, you know, put that in action and create, which, you know, happens with actors, directors, mm -hmm. um, playwrights, all of that. So that's great. Um, now, how does your process sort of work in, you know, creating some of the novels? I mean, I have some of them here. The Long and Far Away Gone and um, November Road, among others, Whiplash River and Gunshot Straight. So, you know, how do you, what is your process in creating the, the story, the characters, and sort of how everything comes together? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think, you know, it's different for every artist and every writer, this sort of source of whatever you want to call it, inspiration. But for me, it's always like it's just a tiny seed of something. It's always like some idea or some emotion or some memory or something I observed, like some really tiny thing that just sticks with me for years oftentimes. And then um, it's sort of like that becomes the, the center of everything. And I just kind of keep building around that one particular image sometimes or one particular um, thought. And I, I find like with, with, with writing and with art in general, there has to be something there that you're really passionate about. Like you just, you have to be in love with what you're doing at a certain level because it's so hard to do. And as you know, you know, the process of any kind of art or writing has a lot of ups and downs and a lot of struggles and a lot of moments when you just want to, you know, slam your head against the wall or actually do slam your head against the wall at times. And so to get through those moments, you got to make sure that what you're doing is something you really care about. And I think to me, that's the most important thing is making sure that what you're working on, what you're, what you're what story you're trying to tell or what you're trying to bring to life and whatever art you're working in is something you really care passionately about. That's great. That's great advice for any form of storytelling as well. Um, you know, I'm in a public speaking class right now. We talk about without the passion behind what you're speaking about in front of people, it's, it won't convey as well. So that's great. Thank you. Um, so it also has been announced that November Road, um, which I just read uh, recently and loved, by the way, um, Thanks. is going to be made or is currently being made into a feature film. Is there anything you can tell us about that going on at the moment? No, unfortunately it is under development, but it, it's one of those kind of things that I'm, I'm both A, not allowed to talk about and B, don't really know anything about. I, tr I try to separate out those two things. It just doesn't help me as a writer with what I'm working on now to be thinking about something as uncertain as a film in development. Um, I, I need to use my mental energy on the work at hand rather than things that I can't control. Sure, absolutely. Um, so you're also known as an author, screenwriter, uh, you know, aside from an author, screenwriter for film and TV. So how do they all intersect for you and, and where sort of has, um, um, you know, everything sort of blended for you in that aspect? Well, it's all about the same thing, which is telling stories, which is what I love to do and what, what I'm um, always working on getting better at. And sort of 
the difference between screenwriting and writing novels is just more about, you know, um, how you approach the idea. Like I think screenwriting is a lot more, screenwriting or playwriting oftentimes is a lot more about structure and about how you put together the pieces of a story um, because you're limited to a certain number of pages and a certain number of minutes um, on screen. Uh, whereas writing a novel, you know, I can write as long or as short as I want. But right. they, they each require different kind of muscles and different kind of imaginative approaches. And, and sometimes uh, one idea you'll start out as, an, as a novel and you'll realize it's going to work better as a movie and other times just the opposite. And sometimes, you know, what I learned from screenwriting, the architecture helps me writing a novel. So it kind of it's like I think it's good for any artist to sort of be engaged in different media. Like, I mean, I think it's great if you're an actor that you're also a writer. I think it's great if you're a writer that you're also, you know, a musician. I think it's great if you're a musician, you're also something else. Like, I think even though you have your one main sort of art form, it can be informed by everything to do with creating. Absolutely. And so that actually is a great segue into my next question, sort of, you know, many of our guests um, act on the screen and stage and many of our listeners write and act and direct and and create like you just said so how would you say that for you creating your characters sort of can eventually defy mediums of art perhaps you know from the page to the screen and, or vice versa um you know and would you be open to different adaptations of your work in the future yeah absolutely i i'm always like excited to see um what different artists do with the original source of something like i love i love movies and i love tv because i love to see what actors for example you know find in characters that i didn't recognize when i was reading the book you know i mean i think that's one of the beautiful things about um art is that other perspectives can give it a life that you didn't even imagine that's fuller than you imagined and so i think it's i think it's great to do that sort of thing and um um like you know there's there's books i love that are movies i love and they're very different and that's always a really cool kind of experience to have as a viewer absolutely thank you um so here's a question from a loyal fan of yours and a somebody who really does shout your name and recommends your novels from the rooftops um, i would say his name is scott gunther from new york um, he's a family friend and um Basically, he we collaborated on this question, which was Shake and Gina, will your character Shake and Gina resurface from, um, you know, Gunshot River or Gunshot Street and Whiplash River? Um, you know, he's, he, he wanted to in, uh, include that, you know, they center around two quirky characters and, um, you know, are they ever going to come back? Oh, that's great. Well, thanks, first of all, to Scott. Make sure Scott knows I, I appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Gut Shot Straight and Whiplash River are my first two novels, and they're sort of caper novels, crime caper novels, sort of in the vein of Elmore Leonard. Um, and they were really enormously fun to write. They're like really fast, and they go to exotic places and a lot of like banter, and it's just really fun to write those. And there is actually already a third installment in that series that's done and finished. It's a novel called Double Barrel Bluff. And it is ready to go, but it's not going to go yet. My, my publisher and I and my agent decided to hold off on it until after my next standalone novel. So Double Barrel Bluff is ready to go, but it won't be out until probably 2023 after my next standalone novel. But um, it was really fun to write too. And I was really happy to bring those characters back because it's like with, with any art, like when you create a character and they come alive, they're like real family to you from then on. And so to have them to have them back is always the best feeling in the world. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, you've touched on this a little bit, but I just wanted to see if you could expand further. What advice do you have to offer to young artists, writers, students, folks that are trying to, you know, find their voice and express their creativity in this world, um, you know, to, to build their career and, you know, to keep going forward? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess, I guess the on, on I guess I have, I have two answers. One is sort of the creative one and one is the practical one maybe. And the creative one is just to always keep creating and to always be doing something. And I know that's hard, you know, like 
um, for lots of reasons. A lot of times you're having to work a full-time job or, or um, you know, the pandemic shuts down certain avenues for performance. And, but there's always a way to be, to be working on your craft and to be creating and to be accessing that part of you that makes your, your artistic identity what it is. And so always be writing, always be performing, always be acting, even if you don't think it might go anywhere, just always, always be moving forward. Um, the other thing I, in terms of sort of more practical terms is finding your own voice is like, as you mentioned, I think is absolutely critical and it's really important. Lots of people will try to give you advice and lots of people will try to tell you what you're doing wrong. And lots of people will try to tell you that there's a certain right way to, to do everything. And I guess I would kind of argue that there's never one right way to do anything when it comes to art. And you just need to figure out what works for you. And that's not easy sometimes. It requires a lot of trial and error. But at the end of the day, don't, don't, don't put yourself in a box because of what other people say. Really try to figure out what are the rules that work for you and follow those to create what you want to create. Absolutely. Um, so sort of coupled that for those who would be interested in possibly, you know, pursuing their work to be published in any way, can you just take us through, you know, a sort of, you know, quick rundown of, you know, the, your, your experience with that sort of process going from, you know, your ideas, your creativity sparking to it eventually being published and so on and so forth? Well, I took a fairly conventional path. Um, because I've been writing for a long time. My very first book was a collection of stories that was, was published when I was still in graduate school long ago. And so at that time, and even today, there's a traditional path, which is that you write a book, um, then you rewrite it and you rewrite it and you rewrite it until it's the best possible you know, novel or collection of stories you can write. And then you find an agent and then your agent um, sends it out to editors at, at various publishing houses, both you know, in New York and smaller independent houses. And then ideally someone there, an editor at one of the houses falls in love with your book and, and it's published. And so that's sort of the traditional approach. But nowadays there's a lot of other different ways to, to, to go at it. Um, a lot of which I'm not real familiar with because I didn't go that path, but there's, there's a lot of different forms of self-publishing. Um, there's a lot of independent presses that do things slightly different. Um, but the, at the end of the day, the bottom line is to start with a book that you love and that is the best you can possibly do. I think the one mistake a lot of writers start early in their careers, they so badly want to get published that they sort of rush the process and they send something out before it's as good as they really can make it. And you don't ever want to do that because a lot of places you just get that one shot and you want to make sure you, you take your best shot. Yeah, for sure. Um, and this sort of couples with that and the previous question, but you know, we've heard on the show before that um, some of the biggest recommendations come from, you know, folks in the industry that it's important to write a little bit each day, even if it's 15 minutes and, you know, especially for students that something can come of that something and you just never know when. So would you agree with that advice and, and sort of, um, you know, from a professional writer's perspective? I, I absolutely agree that um, the habit of writing is really important. Like, I think just getting in the groove with it and doing it at a regular sort of period and knowing that like, okay, every day today, you know, for these 15 minutes, I'm going to write um, is a really good idea because there are bad habits and there are good habits and a good habit, like writing a lot really pays off in the end. Like I, I write a whole lot. I mean, I do it for a living, but it's really not any form of discipline. Like I'm not a disciplined person. It's just a habit at this point. Like I've been doing it so long. I just get up, I do it. And that's a powerful, good thing. Um, as far as writing every day, it just kind of depends. Like, I hate to say you must write every day. Like if that works for you, that's great. But some people are in a situation where that's like almost impossible. But I would say like, uh, write on a regular basis, whatever that means to you. And it, right. and it absolutely like 15 minutes a day is plenty. If that's all you can work in, that's absolutely worthwhile. And there's absolutely good stuff that can come from 15 minutes. Right, absolutely. Um, so Lou, what would you say some of your biggest inspirations are for, for your works and do you have a favorite novel or story that you've put out or is it really like ch choosing you know me asking you what's your favorite <laughs> child at this point you know who's your favorite child yeah and that's a good question i don't know um i think you know whatever i like the best usually is what i've just finished and whatever i hate the most is what i'm working on at the time 
So, <laughs> and, and that, so that goes back and forth. Like there's this really strange perceptive amnesia that goes on. I have, I have um, friends who are writers who are women who have given birth and they say it's kind of like that. Like you have this incredible pain of childbirth and then somehow you forget about that because you got this beautiful child and you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad, but it was that bad at the time. And so it's a really weird thing that happens with writers. Sometimes it, it's uh, you, you love stuff that I look back at my notes and realize like I had the worst time writing that, but now I'm like, oh, that was easy. So uh, I don't trust my instincts whatsoever when it comes to that. And I try not to, I try not to like or dislike anything. I try to stay as, as even keel as possible. <laughs> That's great. So um, do you have a favorite story that you would like to share with our audience today from, you know, over the course of your career, anything that comes to mind when people say, you know, what's the story, you know, it could be working with a publisher or, you know, thinking of an idea from, you know, one of the novels or such. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough one. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, you, that's good interview skills. You caught me off guard on that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about that a little bit. Uh, no problem. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know about that. That's okay. Um, you know, so I mentioned I really enjoyed um, November Road, and uh, have rec my dad then read it uh, after our friend Scott recommended it, and I really think it, it's a novel that it can appeal to a wide array of of people, both history buffs, folks that have questioned, you know, the assassin or studied and questioned, you know, involvement in the assassination of. President Kennedy, or, you know, folks that like mystery and crime, and thriller, all of that. So, um, but something really striking, you just have to look at the cover for this, is your endorsement from Stephen King. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to um, quote it for our audience so we yeah. can talk about that. When people say they want to read a really good novel, the kind you can't just, you just can't put down, this is the kind of book they mean, exceptional. And that's from obviously famed author Stephen King as well. So what was that like for you to hear those words from um, somebody like Stephen King about your own work and, and such. Well, that's a good story. There's the story you were asking for. Like I would say right there, that, that literally blew my mind. Um, I got up, the first thing I do in the morning after breakfast is I just like, I look at Twitter real quick and just like glance, you know, you kind of just grant, glance through it and scroll through it. And so I'm just scrolling through it. And then I see that, you know, like I, no warning, no setup. No one had said like, Hey, Stephen King is reading this, or this might happen. And it was just like one of those moments of complete disbelief like am i awake did this really happen <laughs> and so uh it was it was a pretty amazing thing because i respect him so enormously as a writer and as someone who's so generous to other writers i mean he's always sort of supporting um newer less well-known writers and it's the kind of community he's created that makes art worthwhile you know more than anything it's the people as much as the art itself and so it was an amazing mind-blowing thing to, to see that Absolutely. That's great. And um, well, you know, congratulations on all of your successes. You have a remarkable, ever-growing career, uh, you know, that uh, spans, um, uh, you know, four novels. But so I want to ask, what's next for you? What can we um, look forward to? I'm working on a novel right now that I hope to have finished pretty soon, and it hopefully will be out next year, I'm hoping. Um, and, uh, and then there'll be the follow-up to my first two books after that. And I just hope to keep writing novels uh, as long as I can. Excellent. And is there anything we can promote on here today? Website, social media, any place for folks to, you know, stay in tune with your work? Sure. My website is louburney.com. And um, if you want to go there, you can, you can sign up for the mailing list to get updates. And I'm also on Twitter with Lou Burney and Facebook. And I would love to, to stay in touch with anybody who, you know, might want to stay in touch. Absolutely. Well, I'll have to let Scott know too. Uh, yeah, for sure. That we had a, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This, you know, it, again, it's really great to, you know, define mediums of art and sort of connect different ways, especially for our ever growing audience, because you never know who's listening that may have an aspiration to, um, you know, put pen to paper and see what might happen with them. So thank you for that. Is there anything else that we didn't touch upon today that you can think of? Now, this has been great. It's been so much fun. Thank you so much for uh, thinking of me and having me on. It's a great, it's a great way to approach the subject, I think. Absolutely. Thank you.